today we have with us a very, very talented and I'm so excited and honored because she is one of my childhood idols, our very own Sharon Ah! <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. Hi, Thank you for having me. No, this is, this is very surreal. <laughs> having you here. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharon Ah. So right now, currently sitting here brings back a lot of memories. Back to my roots where I where I started. I remembered rehearsing here for a role in Tiren. So that was 2002. I think Toy just moved here not long back then. Uh -huh. So we were very excited to have this space and I was rehearsing with a veteran, Xia Chuan Xiansheng. So I was very nervous. He was a, sort of like a benchmark of Chinese theatre. Mm. So Sharon, I also heard that you were injured by the set on your very first theatre production. I had a date with Spring. Yes. So how did that happen? <laughs> it's very funny you should uh, bring this up because it left a scar on my shin, I think here. Mm. I mean, of course it's gone now, mm. but it was such a deep cut. Mm. Uh, it was there for, I think, eight years, you know, mm. which was great because it will always remind me um, of my very first foray into a musical. <laughs> because my onstage husband, <laughs> his name was Da Ji, Big Chicken. <laughs> We were performing on the rotational stage mm -hmm. and we are not Broadway, you know. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't an automated one. Uh. Uh -huh. We actually have manual coolies. Like moving. <laughs> Whoa. Students pushing the platform mm -hmm. forward, uh, either clockwise or clockwise, according to the time change. Oh. So whenever it's one turn, I become 18 years old. Oh. And then when if they turn back, I'm 45 years old, you know. Right. <laughs> we were balancing on the stage, uh, preparing to again, I don't I can't remember turn back or turn into time. Mm -hmm. I lost my balance and oh. I think Da Ji also knocked it to me or something. I cut myself. There was a lot of blood. I was very spoiled. Young 19 year old. No. It I affected mean, it, me. I was like, eh, I can't <laughs> Once that, that, that performance ended for that night, mm -hmm. I remember, I mean, with, with shame now, I remember going to <laughs> Big Chicken and going like, oh. Why did you make me lose balance? <laughs> because I needed then a huge plaster. Every night, the plaster was very visible. Oh. So I, I felt that it, it, it affected the aesthetics of mm. this, this role. Uh. But I was just being, I was just being silly <laughs> la. I mean, I was just being stupid. That's so right. now my advice is, uh, the importance of a role is your acting, okay? Don't mm. let little things like that distract you and think that it will take away anything. It won't. Once your acting is on point, everything is fine. It's only when you're not confident of your portrayal, then little things like that yes. change the See, That was the portrayal. Such, such wise advice from Sharon. <laughs> After 40 years, <laughs> I finally realised. <laughs> Sharon, you've mm. always been in front of the cameras, you know, on stage, performing. Mm. So have you ever considered other roles such as producing perhaps? I, I, I did, but I realised, okay, I had no talent absolutely in production, <laughs> producing, directing, writing. I had no mm. other talent. My mm. friends all are very multi-facetted, <laughs> multi-talented. Uh, they can do everything, you know. Mm. But me, I realised I only have one talent and even this talent is debatable <laughs> which is I just like to perform, perform. and act. Mm. So I told myself to each his own, mm. we should just do what we do best. Yes, so instead of being a jack of all trades, you're a master of one. Uh, mm. I won't say, yeah, okay. <laughs> master, I call myself. <laughs> I'm a lover of performance. Uh. I would just continue to act as long as any production requires my participation. Yes. So, uh, let's say you have uh, all the money right, and mm. time in the world. Right? Mm. Let's say if you really want to produce, what show will you produce? Like what kind of show? Oh, I would like genre? to do two. Mm -hmm. One is Cabaret. Yes. So this is one, one show I absolutely love. Is, mm -hmm. is In fact, the role which Emma played uh, could be, I would confidently say that, a dream role for all aspiring actresses, wow. all veterans. I mean, all of us will always dream one day we could play <laughs> this, mm. this, this role. Only Toy Factory can pull, out some, pull off something like that, mm. could garner these two powerhouses together, okay. Face Young and Emma, and to put up a show. So Cabaret is one, and the other I really want to produce is Chicago. Mm. I know it has been made into <laughs> a, a movie, and I myself have watched this musical live about five times. Even if I've watched it before, I watch it again. It has such a, an impact. Visually, it's so beautiful, and most importantly, because it centers on two women, and I've always loved um, plays and musicals 
which allows women to shine. These two are the ones that I feel that they really mm. make women proud. Sharon, I want to ask for your advice. You know, as uh, artists, we tend to receive kind support from our family and friends after they watch a TV or stage show. But we also know that the coin has both sides. We also receive like negative, not so kind reviews from word and words from others like, you know, reviewers, social media comments. So how do you deal with the not so good part of it, the negativity? Okay, this one, uh, I think you asked the right person mm -hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> I, apart from my very first role in I Have a Date with Spring, uh -huh. for the rest of the productions that I got involved in, I received quite bad reviews, especially for the physical uh, paper review. Back in my time, right, there's no social media. So whenever the review came out, the, the producer will cut the newspaper cutting and then paste on the notice board. Every time you walk past, you will see the review, oh. right? It's meant to encourage the actors. Uh -huh. They can praise the whole production, the whole world in the show, mm -hmm. but they will definitely pick me up. The harshest critic oh. criticisms will always be targeted at me. Of course, when I was younger, it was very, very hard mm, of to swallow that and it was very embarrassing because it's out there for everyone to see. Some would try and just in denial, try not to pretend it never happened. Okay. But many will often come up to me and say, don't, yeah, don't care yeah. about reviews. Mm. It's just one person, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it's the most mm. important paper mm. that everybody yeah. reads. In a nutshell, I think it's very important to listen and read and respect the review. Mm. That means do not be too defensive mm. about it. Even if it's one person's view, it's her view. Mm -hmm. and the person, his or her, they are senior cultural reviewers. Mm -hmm. So there must be a reason why you are deemed as one of the uh, weakest link in mm -hmm. the play. I think that has always kept me very, very on my feet mm -hmm. and very humble grounded. and yeah. grounded. For our sanity, let's not forget about the the gushes of love from <laughs> your loved ones, of even course. though they are completely biased. They are like, you're the best, you're the best. Okay, also let's not forget that mm. because that, that's how you balance your life. Of course. My harshest ever criticism I've read on print, uh, mm -hmm. on print for LKY Musical, which already I was insecure about because I cannot sing the musical way. Oh. So already performing in that musical, Very I had special. huge insecurities. But that review mm. targeted not my singing, um, but me as a performer and said that I was pathetic. And that was the first time I ever saw such a word describing a performer. You must know uh, bad performing, terrible or weak or what that is really nothing compared to the word pathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually a word I wouldn't actually use mm. uh, even to, 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 to harshly you know, criticize someone. Yeah. I was 40 years old, that means I'm very confident already, right? Like, as in, at this stage of your life where you shouldn't be shaken that easily. Mm. I remember that completely killed me. Oh no. And, but we, I still had to perform the rest of the 38 shows, right? Because that review came after the first uh, gala performance. But yet, you see, I told myself, respect mm. the reviewer. So I'm already pathetic, so let's not be even more pathetic mm. by just crumbling and yeah. crying in the mm. dressing room. So I shall pick myself up channel into energy. Wear back my chong sum yeah. and perform and hope that as each day pass by, I will mm. become less and less pathetic. Mm. So actually my dream back then was for that same reviewer, because mm. he watched the first gala show, to mm -hmm. come back for on the 38th last show mm. to watch again. Okay. Actually because I really want to know uh -huh. if I had improved. Right. As long as I have improved, I feel that um, it, the journey mm. wasn't wasted. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I really had, I improved. Yay! Even I could feel it. Even I could mm. feel it. I, I improved after the thirty-eight show. Yeah. Have to lah. Can mm. you imagine perform thirty-eight <laughs> yeah. show? I think we constantly have to work on ourselves. Definitely. Uh, and, and and humility is something I, I really wish to share with mm. every performer. And and as performers, we already have one prerequisite, which is we're very 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 thick skin. Yeah. So we we never say die. You know, no matter what, we still want to go out there. And, okay. Mm. Just hit me now. <laughs> But yes. that's the whole joy to me of, of being in a live theatre, being in the entertainment scene, mm -hmm. being uh, as part of this whole thing called the magic of theatre. You are never, never 100% sure of something. Mm -hmm. There's always 
a, 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 a glitch somewhere, mm -hmm. there's always going to be something that you are not anticipating. And this is how we keep ourselves alive. Mm. That's why you look around us, <laughs> anyone or everyone who's involved in theatre at some point of their lives, they are all, we are always more alive. Than, yeah. Because we know that things are just so vulnerable and fragile Definitely, that yeah. we know that we have to cherish Yeah, we always have to every... be on our feet yes, and just grab yes. things as they come, yes, receive yes, things. Yes, mm. yes. So uh, next time, don't uh -huh. be worried, okay? <laughs> don't cry. I mean, yeah, yeah, cry, cry, cry. Go ahead and Definitely, cry. Definitely, yeah, yes. just cry. But come back again. Mm. Yeah. The last thing you want is to be hit by a critic mm. and then never ever standing back up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get hit as many times as mm -hmm. possible, but you, the key thing is to always get back up. Once you're at the lowest point, there's nowhere to go but up. This is true, that's yeah. what I always say. Yes. Sharon, now that you're flying back to Paris, mm. you're going to be there forever, or mm. when will we see you return to Singapore again? Any plans so far? So, this stage of my life, I, I, I'm craving for, you know, a Maggie Chong, Maggie Chong moment. I'm not sure if you maybe Maggie it's Chong, it, yeah. you know, Zhang Man Yu. Ah. Maybe you were maybe one year old. Mm. <laughs> She's my benchmark of an idol. Okay, so I, I've always loved her. At the peak of her career, she went and left and just lived a very quiet life in Paris for a very long time. Mm. Of course, now she's back in Hong Kong. So mm. now I'm telling myself I'm at the Maggie Chung stage <laughs> of my life where I'm in Paris, very quiet life, mm. almost Madame, Madame <laughs> Parisian like, with my cat, Rudong, my beloved cat. Oh. And I just want to experience what is it like to not be judged. This is the paradox of life. Yeah. I've just spent an hour telling you how to deal with criticisms and how to, to manage. Mm. But at the end of it all, it's a very draining and tiring process. Mm. And sometimes I just think to myself, why do I subject myself to all these harsh words? Mm. And then people say, you, you ask for it, well, you want to be a public person, you know, that, that, that's, the, that's the price you have to pay. True, but mm, do you have to be so harsh to mm. a public person? Yeah. Everything we do is magnified and yeah. heightened. That was why when I decided to move to Paris, was at a point of time where I told myself, enough, let me go to a place, nobody judge you because nobody knows you, they don't care. And, and because really Parisians don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you float in front of them naked, they also don't care. <laughs> There's no judgement, they just go like say la vie, that's your life. Say la vie. <laughs> you like to walk around freezing to death, that's fine. Right? Okay. Yes. So I just want to experience how is it like to feel so free and light. I have to come back. Mm -hmm. When my mom one day um, cannot drive anymore, mm -hmm. uh, no longer so mobile and active, uh, or if she's touch wood sick, I have to come back. Mm -hmm. But I hope that by then when I come back, I will have this newfound uh, confidence again mm -hmm. to withstand a new wave of Harsh reality. Yes. For now, I enjoy my anonymity in Paris. So now that you're, you know, in Paris, the mm. city of love, is there someone special? Uh, there's always someone special in my life. Mm. I think my friend has ever remarked that mm. she has never seen me alone. <laughs> so I always have someone special. Uh, maybe because I still believe in love. So mm. no matter which stage or which country, I, I, I always have a person that I'm dedicating my love to. Aww. So in Paris, is my cat, mm. Rudon. Rudon right? I love him to pieces. Aww. And I think he has already forgotten about me. Nah, okay, nah. okay he, he, he forgets me when I go back, but maybe two, three, two days later, mm. he'll remember my scent and mm. that I, I'm the, the one who feeds him. <laughs> nah. Yes, but so now it's currently is Rudon. Mm. Uh, but uh, my special someone remains in Singapore. Yeah. Mm. And because we're at this stage where we don't need to be physically together all the time. Yeah, with technology. Yeah. We are at a very mature level mm. now where distance really doesn't mean a thing. Mm. As a seasoned actress, any words of encouragement to all like theatre makers, filmmakers, actors, actresses in the future? One thing, you have to persevere and never, never stop putting yourself out there. I think at some point, uh, I, I, I stopped going to auditions because at some point, I, I thought to myself, hey, I'm really quite famous, yeah. I shouldn't need to audition. Actually, the director wants to look for me, he should just <laughs> look for me. Okay, right? Okay, I think that's, I want to tell you, it's not the right mentality. Yeah. I think we should all love auditions. Why? Mm, really? Because the director has very, very different needs at that point. When you don't make it for this role, mm. 
But the director will remember you, Keep trust you me. Mind, yes, really, because then you know. the next time the role that suits you more comes along, the director will call you and remember and ask you to come for audition again. Mm -hmm. So treat each audition to me as a performance. Just go and just, just, <laughs> just do your <laughs> song and dance. Be, be very, very, I mean, enjoy the moment. Mm. I myself, I like doing auditions a lot as well. It's always something new, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. And there's always like a joy that comes with it. It's also stressful, of course, because mm -hmm. then when you don't get accepted, uh, when you, mm -hmm. don't, you don't get, get called back for yeah. a second roll call, of course you feel a bit demoralised. But mm -hmm. don't forget, that's just part and parcel of yes. the whole... Yes, just receive, accept Yeah, the phoenix effect, you know. Sometimes, the phoenix effect? Sometimes wow, you, that should be a yeah, thing. Sometimes you burn, sometimes you... Woo! <laughs> We are the lead role! <laughs> yeah, we wait for that moment. So, Sharon, thank you, thank you so much for being such a wonderful thank you. guest on thank our you. episode. I love your, your interview because it's in-depth mm. and I think it will benefit um, uh, theatre, thespians, mm -hmm. audience and even people at large. Oh, life. thank you, thank you so much for saying that. It really means a lot to us. So, do remember to, you know, like, share and subscribe to Happy Factory. Stay safe and au revoir! Au revoir! <laughs> we were supposed to look like mm -hmm. we were taking a bath. So, we only could walk, wear tube and very uh, tight shorts. Okay. And that's why Buntik try and cover the rest of us with oh. plants so that we look naked, you see. <laughs>